Hello friends, in this section we are going to see the various searching techniques. But before starting with searching techniques, it will be a good idea if we understand what do you understand by searching, what is successful and unsuccessful search and what are the applications or areas where this searching is used. So basically to start with, the most common and time consuming task in computer world is retrieval of information or targeted information from huge amount of data. This operation involves searching. Searching is a process of finding the location of the target among a list of objects. If the data is kept or organized in a sequential manner, in a proper manner, it is much easier to search a particular data. Any search is said to be successful or unsuccessful depending upon whether the element that is being searched is found or not found. So basically when we found a particular element it is called as a successful search and if we don't find or the list ends it means that the search was unsuccessful. Searching is a common fundamental operation that is used in various fields and various operations in the computer science, maybe in database management systems, in networks as well as in data mining and artificial intelligence. So we can say that searching are the basic operations that can be used, that can be needed in any of the operations where you want to locate certain data, you want to find certain data. Thank you. Hello. The very first searching technique we are going to see is the linear search. Linear search is the simplest method for searching a particular data. In this technique, the element to be found is searched sequentially in the list. This method can be performed or sorted or unsorted list. Linear search is also called as sequential search as it searches the element or item one after the another in a sequential manner. It is going to check, it is going to scan, it is going to compare each and every element in that list. Uh, consider an example of real world where if you want to search uh, your friend's phone number from the phone book. So what is to be done? What we are going to do? We open the phone book. Then we start st searching. That means we start comparing the very first number, uh, the very first name in our phone book with the, our friend's name. And we are going to compare each and every element from that, that phone book till we reach particular end of the phone book or we reach a particular location where your friend's number is stored. Similarly, this search performs the comparison in a sequential manner. Let's consider one example. Here a linear array is given which consists of seven elements. This array is unsorted and here 15 element that is number 15 is to be searched in this example okay so how this linear search algorithm works so what it will do it will first check 15 which is the element to be searched with the very first element that is nothing but the 92 in our case and it will start comparing whether 15 is equal to 92 obviously it is not so what it will do it will jump to the next location so on the next location 87 number is there again it will compare 15 with 87 again they are not equivalent so it will jump to 53 then 10 then it will reach to 50 at position number 4 it will see that the number stored in an array that is 15 is equivalent to what the number we are searching for that is also equivalent to 50 so both of the things are same that is there is a perfect match that means this particular search is successful search okay so it compares and continues to compare each and every element in the array till it reaches its location where he founds that element or there is a end of the list every technique has certain advantages and disadvantages some of the advantages of linear search is that it is very simple and easy method to implement 
it is efficient for small amount of data it is more uh, suitable or you can say it will be a well it will work very well with unsorted data some of these techniques is more suitable for storage structures which does not support direct access to data for example linked list the one which supports directly uh, access to the data is the arrays okay so this thing is more suitable for indirect accesses some of the disadvantages there it is highly inefficient for large amount of data if you are having thousands and uh, lakhs of records at that time you are using this uh, sequential search that is comparing and doing uh, sequentially searching each and every element so it will be a big problem why because it will be more time consuming okay so the issue will be will be with rest to time uh, other searching techniques such as binary search are found more suitable than the sequential search for ordered data now we are going to see the second method or second technique that is binary search this search technology technique or the method is the fastest searching algorithm it is used for finding the location of an element in a linear array basically it works with divide and conquer technique uh, considering a real life example take an example if you are playing a some game with kids and one person ask him to uh, keep a number between 1 to 100 in your mind and i will guess the number in such scenario how you are going to search or how you are going to identify or guess the right number with minimum questions so basically as per the previous search technique we will first ask him whether the number is 1 he says no if he has not considered 1 or yes if it is yes then well well okay we have searched the element at the first position but no then we will ask him whether it is 2 no whether it is 3 no likewise we are going to ask still we reach till we reach a particular number which he has guessed but now the problem is we want to ask minimum question to that kid and what if that kid has 97 or 98 in his mind so we have to ask him 98 questions that's a big task and time consuming also so the better approach is to use this binary search technique so here what will what we will ask to that kid is we will dividing that list of 1 to 100 into half so we'll ask him whether the number is 50 he will say my either yes or no if it is yes then good luck the search is over the guess is over but no then we'll ask next next question whether the number is greater than 50 if say yes then we are now we are going to search a new number which will be from the range 51 to 100 so we have lessened the data into half that is from 1 to 50 we are going to ignore we are not asking the questions on number 1 2 3 4 5 6 till 50 we are directly going to start with 51 to 100 but again the same questions will be asked whether the number is again we will be finding the half of it whether the number is the same if he says yes or no then we will be searching in either the upper half or the previous half this is nothing but the binary search technique this algorithm can be applied on sorted arrays so the element must be arranged either in ascending order if the numbers are if the elements are number or dictionary order if the elements are strings to apply this binary search on unsorted array first we have to sort the array using some sorting techniques and then using this binary search algorithm we can easily easily search a particular number a particular data from that array so in this search we are searching a particular element by comparing the middle most element so there are certain cases are generated for example case number 
in this if a particular element is available the number you have that has to be searched is available at the middle most element then it's a successful search and we return the middle most elements index number the case two is that if the element being searched is found to be greater than the middle number and keep that in mind our list is sorted list so if the number we are searching is greater than the middle most then we are going to continue the search to right sub array okay so we are searching the numbers to the right side right sub array of that middle most number for example we have seen the number the kid has selected was 97 so we will be searching from 51 to 100 okay that was in case 2 and case 3 if the element been search is found to be smaller than the middle most element then the search is further continued into the left sub array okay suppose by chance the student has or the kid has kept 25 in mind so we will be ignoring the 51 to 100 but we will be searching between 1 to 50 so all these things carries on or the list iterations keeps on repeating on sub arrays until a desired element is found or the size of the array has reduced to zero that means it will be a unsuccessful search let's try to understand the same with the help of an example consider a same example with seven elements and the element to be found in this array is 15 okay so very first step what we have to do first we have to find the mid the middle section okay so how to calculate a mid so mid will be calculated beginning plus end divided by 2 so in this case we will be considering beginning as 0 because we want to find the middle of of this so mid is equal sorry the beginning is 0 and end is equal to 6 so beginning plus end divided by 2 so here the mid will be calculated 0 plus 6 divided by 2 which comes to 3 so this is your m1 that is mid 1 now we are going to compare this 15 with 20 we are comparing the element which we found at the middle with the element in question that is nothing but the 15 we will be comparing now we can see that 15 is less than 20 so now what we are going to do we are going to ignore this because no point of searching the 15 element over here because we are not going to get it okay as it is less than 20 so now what do we have to do now we will be calculating the new end okay the beginning will be same the new end will be mid minus 1 so it will reach mid minus 1 so previous mid minus 1 so that is nothing but the 2 3 minus 1 that is equal to 2 that is the new end because we are not interested in this end now so this will be considered as our new end 3 minus 1 that is 2 now our search will be in this area only now again we will be calculating the new mid so new will be mid will be calculated as beginning that was 0 plus new end that is equal to 2 by 2 so 0 plus 2 by 2 that is nothing but equal to 1 so our new mid now our new mid that is the mid 2 is nothing but 10 is 10 equivalent to 15 no it is greater so no point in searching the 15 in this area at this location so now again we will be calculating the new beginning now the new beginning will be mid plus 1 now this mid that is 1 plus 1 that is equal to 2 so and the end will be same that was 2 so now we again we will be calculating the new mid 
this new mid will be 2 plus 2 by 2 that will that will begin or that will come to this new mid that is nothing but the 2 so this mid is equivalent to this mid or the number we have we were searching yes so that means it's a perfect match and we will be returning 2 as the index number and the search is successful so some of the advantages and disadvantages are some of the advantages are it is suitable only for sorted data it is very efficient if our data is very large a big list it is suitable for storage structures that supports direct access to the data some of the disadvantages are that it cannot be used on unsorted data if if at all you want to use for unsorted data you have to sort your data first and then do the searching binary searching not usable for storage structures that do not support direct access to data and it is not it is very inefficient for smaller list or smaller data thank you in this subsection we are going to see what is sorting sorting can be said as a process of converting an ordered set of elements to an ordered set of elements so sorting can be done either ascending or descending this sorting will be helpful to search a particular element if we store the data which is in sorted manner it will be easier for us to search that data very easily so data will be managed or stored in an increasing or decreasing fashion sorting can be done on names numbers and records sorting reduces the human efforts of searching and it becomes easier to search a particular content consider an example it will be easy to look look up the phone number of a friend from a telephone directory why because the names in the phone book have been sorted into alphabetical order so this sorting can be used in various ap applications like commercial computing search for an information operational search and even in events driven simulations or various numerical computations now we'll see some of the terminologies that is used in the sorting so very first is the sort order sort order refers to the way the data is organized in the content that is whether it is ascending order or descending order so that is nothing but your sort order second is the sort stability sort stability is said that after the completion of sorting the data or the numbers that has been the sequence in which they are previously available is the same or how stable how the thing has not changed or the sorting methods or sorting algorithm or technique has not changed to max amount or to max contain of that sorting so the original order of the data before sorting and after sorting if not more changes is done by an algorithm then that algorithm will be so said as it, a, it is a stable algorithm next is sort efficiency it is measured the relativity of the efficiency so it will be depending upon the maximum number of comparisons and data moment required to sort that data so how many times how many iterations how many comparisons how many data is moved from one location to the another location that will decide the efficiency of that algorithm that is nothing but the sort efficiency next is the passes during the sorted process the data is traversed many times okay so each traversal of data is referred as a sort pass so depending upon an algorithm the sort pass may traverse the whole list that is the complete data complete numbers which is already stored in an array or maybe in the linked list or anywhere in any other data structure form 
or just a section of a list. There are algorithms which will be traversing complete list in per per traverse, uh, per traverse or only a part of list. Okay, thank you. Hello, the new technique is the bubble sort. This is the simplest sorting algorithm that works by repeatedly swapping the adjacent elements if they are in wrong order or in wrong position. It works by comparing each item in the list with the next item and swap if it is required. The algorithm is going to repeat all these steps until it makes a pass that is that will go through the list without swapping any item. It causes the larger values to bubble to the end of the list while the smaller values sing at the beginning of the list. We will see bubble sort with an example so that the thing will be more clear. Now consider the number of elements is 5, 1, 4, 2, 8 and we want to perform a sort operation. Okay, so sorting will be like we have to be check each and every element to its next element. For example, in this case, 5 will be compared with 1. Now, since 5 is greater than 1, it will be performing a swap. So, at 1 place, uh, place 5 will come, at 5's place, 1 will come. Likewise, this will be your answer for the first iteration. Second, now the same will be given as an input to the next. After 5 and 4 will be compared. Again, the 5 is greater than 4. So, again a swap will work. And resultant will be 1, 4, 5, 2, 8. Similarly, 5 and 2 will be compared. Again a swap will be done. 5 and 8 will be compared. And again a swap is there. 5 and 8 will be, no swapping is required because already 8 is greater than 4. Fine. Now, this is the solution of your first pass. Still, the array is not sorted. So, again, in second, it will go as an input to the second pass. So, 1 and 4 will be compared as the things are on place. So, no swapping. Again, 4 and 2 will be compared. A swap is done because 4 is greater than 2. After that, 4 and 5, no need of compare, no need of swapping. Then, 5 and 8. No, no need of comparison, no need of swapping. But now the thing is clear 1, 2, 4, 5, 8. The thing is already sorted. But this will not able to understand the algorithm. It needs one whole pass without any swap to know that the thing is sorted. So again it will compare 1 and 2. They are in place, no need of swap. Then 2 or 4, again they are in place, no need of swap. Again 4 and 5, no need and 5 and 8. Now it understood as no swap is done that means the array is sorted. So in this way 1, 2, 4, 5, 8 will be our output of this bubble sort. The bubble sort is very simplest algorithm between all the algorithm that is available. So many a times when someone wants to explain sorting they will start by using bubble sort algorithm. But it has certain advantages and disadvantages. It is simple and an easy method. It is very efficient for small list of data. But the disadvantages are like it is more time consuming if you have a big amount of data. So definitely it will be a time consuming job. It is highly inefficient for larger data sets. Thank you. Hello, this is the next sort technique that is the selection sort. This algorithm constructs the sorted sequence one element at a time by adding the element to the sorted sequence in an order. At each step, the next element to be added to the sorted sequence is selected from the remaining element elements in the array. So, very first step is to find the smallest element in the structure or in the array 
and second step swap the smallest element with the element at the first position and repeat these steps until all elements get arranged at the proper position this things going to make your elements sorted we'll see one example consider the array 10 5 2 and 1 in this four elements are there so the very first step is to find the smallest element the smallest element in this array is 1 and the very first element in the array is 10 so now what we should do we must swap their places actually we are going to uh, shift the location of the smallest element to the very first location so we will be replacing 10 by 1 then the new array will be 1 5 2 10 and again this process is repeated continuously till we reach a sorted array this is nothing but a selection sort technique we will see all of this so so as to understand this technique this is your original array this is your original array of seven elements so at index number 0 element number 76 is present and at index number 6 element number 6 is present so this is the original unsorted array now we have to sort this array using selection sort so very first step in selection sort is finding the minimum and second step is to change the position of that minimum to the first step okay so there will be multiple passes is required so this is our original array of 76 67 36 55 23 14 6 at first iteration so which is the minimum we will be finding the smallest one the 6 is the minimum so we will be replacing 6 by 76 and 76 goes at the last okay so now in second pass we will be finding and very uh, one more thing you have to remember that whatever the thing will be carried out or searching is carried out minimum is carried out it will be done in the remaining element only which were untouched which were unswapped previously so now it will be searching the minimum between 67 36 55 23 and 14 okay so here the minimum is obviously 14 so 14 and 67 will be swapped so now after the swapping in pass 2 you will be getting this elements so now it will be trying to search the minimum 36 55 and 23 which is the minimum so definitely 23 is minimum so it will go here and 36 will be going at its position so the new array will be 6 14 23 55 36 and 67 76 this is already sorted so no need of sorting once more okay so now it will be finding the minimum out of 55 and 36 so 36 is minimum so there will be a swap between 55 and 36 so after this is done it will check the remaining 55 with the rest of the elements in pass number 4 so in pass number 4 55 and 67 no need of swapping because 55 is minimum than 67 now this 67 will be checked 67 with 76 now again 67 is smaller than 76 so no need of swap so now and it reaches to the end of the array it indicates the uh, sorting technique that this is the end of the array and we have to stop and whatever the result and you got is nothing but your sorted array so 14 23 36 55 67 76 is nothing but your sorted array after five pass now even though this technique well it works well but the problem is that when you have multiple or more number of elements the efficiency of this algorithm will not be that good so this uh, so these are the pros and cons it performs well on a small list so if the data is small it is going to do wonderful it is an in place sorting algorithm 
so that means no additional temporary storage is required to store the new arrays or the sorted arrays or some temporary no temporary memory or storage will be required to keep your elements and the cons is that it is inefficient when dealing with a huge list of items so if when the number of items when the number of elements is is huge that is multiple number of elements are there huge number of uh, data is there and that you will be using this selection sort it will not give you proper input so it will not give you uh, the the speed will be very slow so that's the main problem with this selection sort thank you